Well, hi there, everyone. This is Denise from Superfast Recruitment, and I am mega excited today because finally I've got the <laughs> Katie Green, one half, one part of um, the rapidly expanding uh, Centre of Excellence with me today. And I have so many questions. I don't know quite where to start, but what I want to do is sort of, I'll let Katie introduce herself, but for those of you that don't know Katie and the Centred Excellence brand, this is an amazing brand who I am very pleased to say um, that we have been working with ourselves for, oh gosh, I think it's coming up to 10 years now since mm -hmm. we've met Nikki. Um, uh, in, in various guises, we've, we've worked with the guys, but one of the things about them that I absolutely love is their ethos and the way that they work with the current business owners, particularly around helping them scale the business, but also critically <laughs> getting the life back at the same time, which I think is right. pivotal. Um, right. So... Katie, I'm, I've got all these questions to ask you. Mm. Uh, excuse me if I keep referring to my notes because I don't want to miss anything because we've had a couple mm. of Perfect. our guys put questions here that they want to ask you as well. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, mm. excellence, mm. and things that we, we want to know, and then, uh, and then obviously we'll just, we'll just launch into it. Yeah, lovely. Well, thank you very much for a lovely intro there, Denise. Really appreciate it. And um, we're very appreciative of, of being your client, too. Thank you so much for the work <laughs> you do for us. Make you Welcome. Look. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, as, as, um, as you said, so my, my name is Katie Green. I am the other, yeah, the other half of the Centred um, Excellence team. So Nikki and I joined partnerships it was actually about three and a half years ago now. So, um, yeah, time has flown really in a, in a really positive way. And yet at the same time, there's so many changes, positive changes to our business too. So my background, which most people will, will be interested in, is that I have been in recruitment pretty much um, uh, 18 years, 19 years, maybe even 20 years. Um, so a long time, and I think like lots of different um, people in recruitment, especially when they're on recruitment businesses, I started classically as that recruitment consultant um, and worked my way up to running a recruitment business, MD of a recruitment business called Aspire. And I did that in London. I ran their London office for around six years. That was... Uh, a niche recruitment business yet fairly large so at the time that I ran that business I had around averaging around 65 fee earners um, turnover of around 8 million um, we were doing contract perm I also ran or was responsible for an outsourced function that we did for one of our digital clients so I had quite a breadth of experience and quite a breadth of um, responsibility that was across about 12 different disciplines so I've got lots of experience that I can pull on and expertise for my clients around all those service offerings and models and also around launching new desks because most of those desks came off the back of the digital revolution and mm -hmm. so they were new if you like you know they, they weren't actually desks that were already there and the first thing that I did when I started recruitment, I actually started a, a team um, in the marketplace that I worked in beforehand. So I, a very colorful background. I've had lots of experience on databases, on merging databases, on uh, we acquired two businesses, bedded them into London. So I've got experience of, of doing that. Plus the outsource function, we had international offices, Singapore and Hong Kong. Um, so, so many different things um, that I was really, I've got to say, very grateful and very lucky to be a part of um, and to experience because that's what gives me some of my uniqueness now um, in terms of the areas of expertise that I can share with individuals. Yeah, and, and a cheeky little question from me, what made you move to... Mm you know, the coaching, because I know you, you're, you're an amazing coach as well. And I just wonder what the shift, what prompted the shift? Yeah, so, well, for me, I had always been interested. One of the things that was probably the biggest part of my role and I enjoyed the most was around people development, succession planning, 
yeah. I grew all of my managers organically um, through, you know, up through the ranks. So from consultant through to um, managers, and I had a team of 12 managers. So I absolutely loved coaching, loved developing, getting the best out of individuals. And then I took myself on my own NLP journey. This was actually before I even um, even started working and, and met Nikki. I decided to do my own personal development plan, and, and that took me into the world of NLP. And it was off the back of that, similar to Nikki, I started applying some of those things into the business and just seeing the shifts that people got from some simple tweaks and techniques uh, that I'd learned was incredible. So then I was a client of Nikki, so I've been on, on that other side as well. And I really wanted to continue to do more on the coaching, personal development, helping people to become the best that they possibly can, which I believe everyone has that ability within them. And I approached um, Nikki and said, look, you know, I'm thinking that I'd like to do something like you're doing. What do you think? Do you think I've got enough experience to be able to add value to people? And she said, yeah, better than that. Why don't you, you know, why don't we yeah. join forces and do this together? And the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> NLP has a lot to answer for, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It does. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really is. It's transformational. It really is. And it's, it's yeah. taken me on another journey into other yeah. areas um, now. But, yeah, it, it, it's a big life changer. I hadn't realized that because uh, both Sharon and I, started our NLP journey and then left corporate and started our own business. So it's, wow. it's an interesting one, isn't it? isn't it? It is. It really is. So let me ask you this question first of all. So okay. as a ex recruitment business owner, as an MD, mm. um, what do you think are the three biggest problems that business owners are facing today? And obviously we're in a very disruptive market. Lots of things are changing. The three mm. model really is not mm. effective anymore. What are those three key things you think that are the, the big problems that people need to be aware of and handle? Okay. That might not be what you're expecting. The mm. first one that I would say is actually focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and let me explain why that is, is because we all have the same time and energy. So everyone has the same amount, you know, we, we all have the same constraints that we work under. But what makes the difference is what you choose to spend that time and energy on. So we know people get different results. You look at recruitment businesses, some people get some results, some people get other results. And the key difference in those results will be what you choose to spend your time and energy on. Mm. And actually, what I notice, uh, and I can say this because, you know, hands up, I've been there myself, is what most people in recruitment um, do, um, unbeknowingly, is that they burn themselves out. And they burn themselves out on doing too many things at once. So it could be things like, you know, one minute I'm doing an invoice, the next minute I'm, I don't know, searching for a candidate, the next minute I'm doing some business development, the next minute I'm writing a PSL pitch, the next minute I'm looking at my stats and my conversions. So what will happen is they could be doing 20 things all at the same time. But what they're doing is they're proportioning their energy and time on those 20 things. So actually the effectiveness that they're being in those 20 areas is, is limited. Whereas what super successful people do is they focus on the two or three, no more than three, key areas that will give me the biggest return, that will make the biggest shifts. Because when you focus on less, then you can actually spend more time on those and energy on those areas and therefore get a greater output. So yeah i'm just thinking about how so how do they i don't want to go off a, too much of a tangent but i think this is a fascinating subject how do they uh identify those three big areas is there a formula that you guys use i know you've developed a lot of processes and models. yeah yeah and and you've probably heard us talk about the 80 20 rule yeah and that's yeah. you know pareto's law um and and that's essentially it so if you think about it um What's interesting is certain actions will not have the equivalent result out of that action. Mm. 
Mm. So what I mean by that is you can you can do one action, but actually your return on that action. So the input might be a, a small amount, at, but the output might also be a small amount or the input could be a large amount of time and energy. But actually what you're getting back on the output is a small amount of time and energy. So here comes the difference between being super successful and super disciplined and focused like that monk like discipline versus I am a jack of all trades and I'm doing too many things at once. Because then what happens is I could be proportioning 80% of my time or more or less, but a good proportion of my time on actions and activities that have a big input, but very little output. Mm. So I'm not being as effective as I could be. And we know that in recruitment, there are so many things that you can be focusing on that actually it's really important that you do learn. And, I, and that pro probably will bring me to the question you've just asked me in terms of the answer to that, that you do learn, well, what are those things that I need to be spending more of my time on? Mm -hmm. And this is something that we teach people. This is one of the things, focus and discipline, that we teach people because People often think it's all around the strategies that I need in terms of implementing in my business, like business strategies. And yes, absolutely, they are critical, they're important. Yet the biggest change that you need to make is actually in yourself. And one of those key areas is often around this focus point and this discipline, this, this monk-like discipline that people need to have. Because if you look at the uber-successful people um, in this world, they will be very clear on what are the actions, the 20% of my actions that will give me 80% of my output? And how mm -hmm. do I make sure I'm doing more of those actions? Yep. yep. So you do need to know what to focus on. You're right. And the first place to start with that is actually what, what's my goal that I want to get to? Because you have to be able to measure things to know what to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. So what is my goal? Because when you've got a clear and defined goal and you know what that is, that's going to help you keep on track. That's going to actually help you keep focused. Because then what you can do is start measuring, well, where is my time going? What am I giving my time to? And are those actions moving me towards my goal? Or are they taking me away from my goal? Mm. So ha does that make sense? So yeah, and I'm, I'm fascinated as well because often when you talk to people, and obviously we talk to, to business owners too, is that, you know, when you say it's your goal, that often you'll, you'll have a conversation, they've got three or four goals. Goals. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. more. Or, or more. more, as can be the case. And in many ways, we, I understand why that is because the thing, the challenge that we have with recruitment is it's so reactive. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is every single day you have hundreds of actions, activities, um, know, scenarios, situations, problems being chucked at you. Fact. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And so it's even more difficult for recruitment business owners to be able to move those clutter, you know, get break that noise, silence that noise. And actually say, hold on a minute, I've got all of these things coming at me, but mm. what are the one or two things that are going to make the real difference today? And the reason they're going to make that difference is because they're going to move me powerfully towards that goal that I have. Yeah. And this is the difference between us setting a target, like you're saying. So let's say we set a goal at the beginning of the year, and we might have that goal might be a financial target. And we set that goal. And then we work our way towards it. But actually what happens for a lot of recruiting business owners is that's a goal, but that gets lost in the ethos very quickly. And mm -hmm. suddenly any budget, any target that they started with at the beginning of the year, even as quickly as sometimes within three months, has been chucked out the window. Why? Because things are, running, are landing in their lap and they're not making sure that everything they're doing is focused on that one point to get them there. And so they're, they're working on things reactively around them and actually, those things aren't going to move them powerfully. And or, worse than that, they've just lost their top biller, and their top biller is, you know, 40% of their, of their revenue mm. target. Yeah. So focus. So focus. Focus <laughs> is, 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 yeah, honestly, 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 is the key thing.
So how would you do that? So I'll give you, um, I'll, here's something that people could do um, that um, would help them to do it. So the first thing you want to do is track your time. Now, we, we do this in a, a more in-depth process, but I'll literally give you five steps to how you could do it. So the first thing is, over a period of a week, track every 30 minutes where your time is going. So what activities is your time going on? And categorize yeah. those activities. Yeah? So yeah. track your time every 30 minutes and then categorize them. And you're going to put them into categories. And then what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the percentage of your time that is spent in those different categories. And then you're going to label those categories. Is it of value or is it of waste? Yeah. 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 And then you're going to say, right, what are the ones that I want to eliminate that are the waste? And then what are the ones that I want to do more of that are of value? And focus on those yeah. that are going to move you towards your goal. That's a really, really kind of quick, simple way. Yeah. So that. focus, what next? What's the, what are the other two that you would suggest? So the other two is we, we teach. Um, so to build a really super successful recruitment business, there's four key machines mm. that get you there. We call them the four machines. And these are all about the flow of pipeline. So the first machine is all around your acquisition, your acquisition of your clients and your candidates yeah yeah so that's your incoming the second machine is around your conversion and i was just talking about this actually on our q and a call earlier to um to some of the guys the second one is, is um your conversion so how am i converting those clients that are coming in and converting those candidates and then the third is your delivery so what's your service delivery to do that what value are you add into your client and then the fourth is the economic machine. So how well is my business yeah. running in terms of, of finance? But the, the key ones here that I would say that people need to focus on are those, well, certainly um, for the benefit of this call, is, is those first three. Yeah. Because what will happen is that people's business will not be being successful. And the reason that it's not being successful is because this flow of pipeline between those machines somewhere along the line is not flowing properly. So either I haven't got enough of my clients coming in yeah, and therefore I've got a BD issue. And so, you know, I can't convert them because I don't have enough at the front end or, um, or candidates. So that's the first part in terms of the acquisition or they're in um, the second stage, which is about conversion. And that could be that they're just not able to convert those clients properly. So that could be things around the model. It could be things around their team. It could be things around, you know, the processes that they're using. It could be things around um, maybe competency and or it could be around how they're actually delivering that value, that service to the client. So mm -hmm. it could be a num lots of different reasons why that second uh, machine is, is, has got a, a problem or a block. And yeah. then that third machine on the service delivery will absolutely be about how they are delivering that service. And I'm talking about not just the um, pre-placement management, the post-placement management, the whole structure from start to end of how they're delivering that service. Mm. And, there'll be, and there could be blocks in that. I think customer service gets so overlooked and it is vital. Um, Ryan Dice, you will probably know of Ryan in the, in the US at the Digital Marketing Conference. And one of the hip things he always goes on about is – Customer service is so vital today, and yet yeah. so many people. And I think, particularly, you know, when it comes to to recruitment, you know, I remember old right. school recruitment. You know, I was I worked in the pharmaceutical industry before I had a had my own business, and uh, I'll never forget. I always used to, and you knew that your recruitment consultant by name. You could ring them at any time. Right. And they would always like give you a steer on things and you just felt like included and then things started to shift and you can never get hold of anybody. And I think mm. now it's starting to move back again now. So um, mm. I think it's, it, it's such a, such a vital thing. And, <clears throat> and you're absolutely right because in, in the world that we're in today, it's all around customer experience. Yeah. 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 Whether, whether, you know, whether we want to embrace it or not, it, it is. 
And people are looking for a different degree of customer experience. They want more innovation. They want a different way in which they want to be engaged with. And again, I think recruitment um, sometimes can, we can be a little bit um, behind the time, should we say. Mm. And we think that we can still offer the same level of service and do things in the same way that we've done for years. And that's still going to work. And, and, it, and it's a fact, it, you know, it just isn't. You've got to be different. You've got to be clear on what your differentiators are. You have to be clear on how that um, client or candidate is experiencing you in a different way that is going to put you in a different pond, if you like, from other people. So you've got to make sure that they're unique abilities in that way. And that repeatable business is absolutely critical because you cannot scale a business unless you have something which is repeatable. Could you talk a bit more about that, Katie, when you say repeatable? You mean with the same accounts or? Well, yeah, but absolutely. You, you know, you, so what, you want to make sure that you have um, clients coming back to you yeah. and that you have um, a, you want to, if you like, a group of or some major accounts that you know are giving you almost guaranteed revenue. Yeah, yeah. Every every month, every year, and the moment that you can systemize your service offering so that you are providing a very high level service offering, that is when you can start moving that client from contingent business, yeah. contingent, yeah, to retained or exclusive, and that's where the repeatability starts to become more exciting. Because then what you have is you not only have fees coming in a different format to you or in a more guaranteed way, but also your clients, you can lock, you can have contracts with them that could be for a year, for two years, rather than you're a spot business contingent recruiter yeah. who's only as good as, you know, the last placement that or the current placement that I'm making. Yeah, yeah. So what else? And that's, I mean, that's when, it, risky. when it comes to other other problems, what other areas do you and do you and Nikki experience that that make a huge difference to people's results? Well, I think we've we've touched on it, haven't we? Which has to be around that three hundred and sixty model. And for me, that's around processes and systemization. Because if you want to grow a business that um, can release you from working twenty four seven that potentially if you have an appetite or desire or aspiration that you want to sell it in the future, or if you um, just want to have that right work-life balance where you can go on holiday with your family and not have to be working while you're on holiday or not having to be worried about what's going on in the office, you have to have a business which is systemized. Yeah. And the key, um, one of the key areas that is a big problem within that whole systemization piece is that 360 model because that's probably one of the biggest culprits i would say um, that affects recruitment businesses in their ability to mm. create a reliable a sustainable a scalable business it's interesting because one of our one of our clients we we had a call with with one of our groups recently about 360 and this particular company where it was recruiting and one of one of our clients texts me afterwards to say 360 definitely dead how can you possibly ever find a 360 recruiter now that will stay with you and can deliver mm. Mm. Um, so, uh, and, and and you know he he or she is right and in yeah. fact i did a call um i did a call earlier with a gentleman who um who actually um had um come to one of our events um hasn't been on our course and come into one of our events and he said to me katie the reason i'm calling you back now three months later to say that i want to continue yeah that i, I want to do the course with you is <laughs> you because, were right all along <laughs> is is because these two guys of mine that were doing 360 have literally just walked out of my business setting up in total competition because oh, they God. think they can do it themselves so you know, and, and he said to me, and I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. It's because I'm still working this 360 model. Yeah. yeah. And it's a killer. It's an absolute, it's a cash flow killer. 
it's um, it's a killer in um, in so many different ways because it puts you at high risk. Yeah. Because if if in that same scenario, if one of your top billers walks out tomorrow, you don't have the relationships with the client, and you've lost a major chunk of that revenue for the for the next year, and that's yeah. not easy to make up. We all know that. Yeah. You know that takes time. So what what do you suggest people do instead? What what do they need to start considering? Well, <clears throat> there are the. the, the, the wonderful news is there are other ways of doing it and the other ways of doing it will leverage your time and expertise 10 times greater than running a 360 model and the first place to start is we actually map people's service offering first to yeah. understand what model works for them because there are two different types of models that we teach well within those there's potentially three um, because there's different ways of doing it but um we have what we call the 120 model. Yeah. I'll call it 120 because people understand what that means rather than our, our, our language for it. Um, and the 120 model is where you have resources, then you'll have people doing delivery and people doing business development. Yeah. So you split that 360 function into three. Yeah. And then we have something we call the 240 model, and there's two different ways you can do that. So you can have business development and delivery as, as one core function. So you would either have a consultant who's doing business development and delivery together or a pod of people who are doing that, depending on the size of your team. And then you would have somebody else who would be doing the resourcing function or that candidate acquisition and supplying those candidates to that individual. Or you can put um, resourcing and delivery together as one function and then have somebody doing the business development as a separate function. I was um, in preparation for this call. I was looking at some of the some of your different stats and some of the results that some of your your clients mm. actually get, and they're they're pretty outstanding, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So let me give you yeah, actually, let me give an example of that. So um, you might see the podcast, um, the interview that I did just two days ago. I think it was with James Morehouse. Yes, yeah. So one of yeah, so one of our our um, clients. So James was doing 360 model, and um, and they were um, well. It, it wasn't being successful for them. And at the time, he even said to me, and he, I quote him on the interview, said, "You know, I thought 360 was the way to go, and and it wasn't until I met you ladies and, and learned that there is other ways of doing it, and came on the course. And then when they did that, we taught them. They picked up and decided that actually having mapped their service offering." the one that was going to work best for them and their, well, I want to say best for them. Right, let me reframe that. When you map your service offering, the way you want to decide which is the right model for me is based upon how am I serving my customers. Mm. So it's not about me as a recruitment business. It's not about how I want that, that service to be delivered. It's actually about what's right for my customers. And that is part of the process that, that we do. So from there, it was the 120 model for James and James, and that's what they applied. Now, he will tell you, and quotes in that video, they have, in the last six months, produced 50% more revenue with that model than they were doing previously. Wow. And they've gone from two people to seven. Well, so they've expanded the team as well? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But um, well, he's five at the moment. He's got two more joining um, yeah. shortly. But um, but but those guys are not all um, fee earners. But he said the profit that they're getting, they're getting twenty six twenty six percent more profit on every placement that they make. Twenty six percent more profit. Wow. Yeah. And that's purely from sort of working with people's strengths then absolutely and he said you know i now realize where my flow is and part of that yeah. will be you know actually going back to what we were saying about focus where am i spending my time am i in flow am i focused on the things that i'm best placed to be doing that yeah. work in my flow and that i get great results from and then you know how do i make sure i've got the right people around me in those right roles because somebody who loves business development and is really good at business development probably isn't going to be as good or as motivated 
with finding candidates. Yeah. Or doing the resourcing function because they take different types of energies. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, that I would totally agree with your um, with your client that if you are still working a three hundred and sixty model, it is going to absolutely prohibit you in a, in a very big way to yeah. scale that business. Yeah, am I allowed to ask? I know I'm allowed to ask because it's our podcast answer. But when you say different, <laughs> when you say different energies, what do you mean by different energies? When you say it takes a different energy from a, a resourcer to a you know, a BD person. Yeah, so we use a profiling tool that looks oh, right. at, yeah. yeah, when you're most in flow and what those energies are. Right. Okay. And then when you understand where you're most in flow and what type of energy you are, you can actually build a team around you to complement those energies. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Get it. And it, it, it very much, it, um, it totally maps on to the 360 role. So it's a no-brainer because it means that when people hire they can actually, again, it's more confidence because if they're looking at people's energy sets as well as interviewing them from a competency base, um, it gives them a much tighter and, and um, uh, a better interview process. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. There are so many things out there that can help you with your business. And it's not mm. just the next marketing strategy or the next sales process or script that you use. It's so many other things that, that interact with your You're right. business You're right. Business. You've shared a lot. Where do you think people, you know, if you think about, like you talked about focus, you talked about the four key elements of a business, mm. you've talked about 360. Where do you suggest, so somebody, you know, they've just come across you for the first time. They're in an absolute mess. You know, they're overwhelmed. They're, they're worried. They're concerned. Things just aren't working. A apart from getting on the phone to you, where do you think they start? Where, where would you say, look, okay, let's just start here. Right, okay. So the first thing that we do is we start to cut through the crap. Sorry, I'm going yeah. to say that. Uh, and we, we will literally remove things for you. So we will show you how to get 80% of things off your plate straight away. Yeah. yeah. So people leave us after the first experience with us of just feeling lighter, just feeling clear on what their focus is. We get them absolutely clear on what are the next steps for the next 90 days the next quarter and those steps will move them forward powerfully and and what's interesting you mentioned about the results that we get for our for our clients is that those that first time that they meet us what happens off the back of that for people is probably the biggest one of the biggest sort of um um uplifts that people will get um and, and you know Dawn really well. And a great oh, yeah. example is probably yeah. Dawn. Um, I know you work with Dawn as well. And, um, you know, Dawn, in the first two weeks of coming off the back of um, working with us the first time, suddenly did six times more placements than she'd done in the last <laughs> previous six months. And that was because we got her very focused on what are those types of roles that you're yeah. recruiting for and, and, and the process to follow to do that. Yeah. So... Um, I would say, you know, whether or whether or not, you know, we, let's say us or, or any other provider um, in terms of other people that you could work with, um, the first thing that I would advise people to do is do that time, do that time process because even if they did that and, 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 and weren't working with us, it's going to give them some mega insights. Yeah. I mean, for any, like you said, for any business owners, I still fill out an activity inventory even to this day, if I suddenly get to like, you know, we finish about half five, probably about half six, really. And I'm still here. And I'm thinking, what have I got up to today? I know that I need to get that form out and I need to fill it out again and just think, all oh, right, I guess I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And that's how we identified all the roles in the, in the business now that we, yeah. that, that we need as we're, as we're scaling because it's just so, so that, that absolute clarity. Can I check my questions? Because I think you've answered yeah. quite, quite a lot. Uh, uh, so, is there anything else? I think we've answered quite a few of them here, actually. Is there anything else that, you know, there are a number of questions in, you've covered an awful lot. Is there anything else you, you think is really key for people to know about scaling and growing? 
I will go back to the systemization yeah. of of their processes because I think sometimes some recruitment business owners have a fear of um, sort of key success factors, KPIs and processes, let's say. And that's probably because they might have had a bad experience themselves in the past where they worked yeah. for a company and it was very KPI driven. And then they start their own business with, with that absolute sort of aspiration goal of, you know, I'm going to make sure that my business is different <laughs> and that, um, yeah. I was and that, you know, we've all been there. Yeah, yeah, and that, you know, we don't have these, these um, what's the word, these sort of, you know, control mechanisms that, yeah. that make us feel like, you know, we're becoming, yeah. uh, you know, a slave to our business. And yet, actually, by having a business that's systemized and processed, you are giving more of your own flair and creativity mm. and demonstrating that more times over than you possibly could if you don't have processes. So let me explain what I mean by that. Is because if you have a process and you know that process is one that you know you personally would use with a client. So if a client touches you and they say, I get an awesome, awesome level of service when I ever I work with you. Mm -hmm. And then they work with one of your colleagues or part of your team and that person doesn't follow that same structure to you. So actually what the client or the candidate experiences is you know substandard in comparison mm. yeah so when you have a process that you know that everyone follows and it is the magic moments that you create that you give to that client and that candidate and everyone else is giving that same magic magic moment then you will only have a far far greater successful more successful business yeah. and it's turning that that myth that that kind of um if you like um, misunderstanding of what systems do for you because they actually enable you to control your business yeah rather than be a slave to your business um, and it definitely means that you can grow your business and that you can you know remove yourself from having to be in that business 24 7 and also having to be having to micromanage people you know, you've got to allow those systems actually allow the empowerment and the autonomy to happen. Yeah. Structure is freedom. Yes. Structure <laughs> is freedom. I might claim that one. I don't know if I've stolen that from somebody else, but you know, I think it, it's interesting because well, you say that exactly the same. I know it's a different, a different aspect, but when um, Sharon and I both left corporate, we were like, we worked in the pharmaceutical industry. I love the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you for, for, for doing some amazing things for me in my life. But, um, you know, you were literally KPI to within an inch of your life. So it's like, you have to spend so many days out in the field. You have to do mm. this. You have to do that. You have to do the other. You have to achieve, you know, when I worked as a, a, a sales representative, you have to see 8.5 doctors a day. <laughs> So there was all of that. So the, of course, the minute, you know, you get that, you, you're, you're somewhere else and you completely change. And it takes a while for you to realize that that structure is, you know, absolutely, absolutely key. I was watching a TV program, a bit off tangent, but my podcast tends to be a bit like this. I was watching a TV program last night with Fred in from um, the, is it First Dates? I don't know if you've seen a, a program that he's doing about remarkable yeah. restaurants. And he was right. in the Basque region in Spain, and this was this particular restaurant. And they, they got out something, it was like a, a, a Michelin star, three, three star or something like that. But they got like 1,300 covers a day that they were getting out. And Whoa. literally, they, they had, I think they had 40 restaurant staff. But what was fascinating was it was like everything was processed to a point where not processed food but processed in a way that even the dish cloth was aligned a certain way mm -hmm. at the end of the table that mm -hmm. they would use and every i think it was every 45 minutes an alarm went off and they literally washed the whole kitchen down wow it was just fascinating to watch and then they went on to the fact that this this particular steak restaurant that they went to and again it was like um the steaks had to be cut a specific size and every single steak was cut that specific size because that's how 
they have the best steak apparently in the world and it was always yeah. a certain way and the right level of spoons and the, you know fascinating but I think that really is a key point you know about it it, it's structured and you may I don't know whether probably you and Nikki do I know because I've spoken to Nikki about it is that often we people say I don't have the time and it's mm. about well if, if you systematize things you would have the time and it's about making it important uh, important enough so Katie yeah. incredibly generous today with oh. all your insights so if people want to find out more about the centered excellence magic um, uh -huh. what do they need to do and how can they find you right so um, you could either probably the best way is to um, either pick up the phone or email me my email address which is katie at centeredexcellence.co.uk. You've got our website, which is um, www.centeredexcellence.co.uk. Um, or, yeah, or connect with me on LinkedIn. But we are um, we're going to be at the Expo. You, you yeah. guys there? Yeah, we're, gonna yeah, be at we're there the without the Expo. But I would say don't wait. You know, if, if you're keen um, and you want to grow your business and you want some help, and expertise in doing that in a risk-free easy simple fast and effective way yeah pick up the phone and um and talk to me i'm very open love to have call with somebody um just a, just a thing as well um on our podcast we do get people that listen from all over the world um are your programs open to people outside of the uk too totally yep we have people um in singapore we have people in germany we have people uh where else we've got people at the moment uh, america yes we do great so um yeah we have um, an online uh programs too so great. we can yeah well thank you for today and uh, i'm sure we will catch up very soon at uh, expo yeah lovely thank you thanks denise and thanks everybody for the opportunity really appreciate it you're welcome